dear students i welcome all of you in the another session of transportation engineering and management in last session in last two sessions actually we have learned about the concept of traffic engineering traffic management the wholesome concept of traffic engineering and management we have learned that what are the scopes of traffic engineering scope means boundary of the subject that these are the topics that you have to learn we have already discussed the scope we have discussed about the functions now let us move ahead let us begin our journey for the remaining topics of transportation engineering management in which we have been learning about transportation characteristics we have been discussing about the first module that is about the introduction part and in this session what we are going to cover is we are going to cover the concept remaining concept of tem the remaining topic of road user characteristics piev theory that is perception interaction emotion and volition time and vehicular characteristics see i have discussed that the the particular method to remember the scope of traffic engineering and management is csgopa where c stands for traffic characteristics s stands for studies g stands for geometric design o stands for operation regulation and control p stands for planning and analysis and a stands for administration and finance we have been discussing about the first thing that is transportation or traffic characteristics the traffic characteristics can be divided into two things first is is called as road user characteristic and second is called as vehicular characteristics in the road user characteristics we have learned that there are four segments physical mental psychological and emotional in physical there are two segments permanent and temporary we have discussed about the permanent characteristics let me revise it once again Tra traffic characteristics can be divided into two parts road user and vehicle road user can be divided into four parts physical mental psychological and environmental physical can be divided into two parts first is called as temporary second is called as permanent in this session what we are going to cover is we are going to cover the psychological characteristics emotional characteristics and mental characteristics because we have covered the things of temporary characteristics in the last session let us discuss about the remaining temporary characteristics of road user characteristics so it can be divided into three segments it can be either fatigue it can be either alcohol or illness or disability now as far as fatigue is concerned fatigue means tiredness of the driver if the driver is driver is too much tired then he can suffer from he can be suffered from fatigue it involves the drowsiness or sleepiness and it can reduce the judgment capacity of the driver in order for in order to requirement of the better driving operation and it can also increase the reaction time 1% of the reported accidents are due to the driver being asleep so this is the statistical data so if you are feeling drowsiness if you are feeling sleepiness if you are too tired then it is suggested you should not drive the vehicle for a long route then the next thing is about alcohol 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 has the noticeable effects on the mental and physical efficiency it produces poor attention slower response and it can cause loss of self control the driver can lose his or her self control if he has or she has been drunk and another is about illness or disability the illness or disability can produce intense reaction because if you are ill if you are suffering from headache or fever and if you are driving and if any of the object comes in your way then your reaction would be quite intense compared to the normal reaction you can uh, produce very harsh reaction so this is temporary characteristics now let us discuss about the another thing that is about the anger climate and season 
the anger climate and season can affect the reaction time and judgment it was not necessary to mention because it can also be understood easily now the next thing is about psychological characteristics there are total five important psychological characteristics psychological characteristics is all about the psychic thinking of the driver it involves motivation individual differences learning capacity of the driver intelligence of the driver while driving and emotional characteristics so psychological characteristics involves this thing if the driver is not motivated for the driving the vehicle then he can make any of the mistakes while driving then another thing is about intelligence while driving on the steeper terrain steeper road the drivers learning drivers intelligence will play an important role because if the intelligence is there then the driver will be able to take decisions on his own then the next part is about environmental characteristic four environmental characteristics are there traffic facility atmospheric condition locality and another thing is called as traffic stream characteristics let me let me write it for you that is called as traffic stream characteristics t s c now what does it mean by traffic stream characteristics so let me tell you that whenever you are entering from a slow moving traffic to fast moving traffic you will have to have the encounter of mixed traffic condition heterogeneous traffic condition where all other kinds of pcu factors you have already learnt about pcu that the space which is uh, uh, occupied by the vehicle so whenever you are entering from a slow moving traffic to fast moving traffic or in a heterogeneous traffic you will have to suffer a characteristic that is called as traffic stream characteristic that flow will be like a stream so that is called as traffic stream characteristic that is one of the important parts of environment now let us discuss further let us revise the concept once again the road user characteristics can be divided into four parts physical mental psychological and environmental physical involves permanent and temporary permanent involves vision hearing reaction time and strength temporary involves alcohol fatigue illness drug kind of things then comes the mental characteristics that involve knowledge skill intelligence motivation motion and literacy then comes the psychological characteristics that involves attentiveness fear anger superstition and then comes the environmental characteristics that is all about traffic stream characteristics traffic facilities atmospheric conditions and locality and environment so this is the basic overview that you can see on the slide that is road user characteristics now another important thing that i would like to mention over here is about the reaction time the theory that is collaborated with this reaction time is called as pie theory now what happens this theory is related with the total reaction time of the driver that is called as piev theory the full form of piev stands for the p stands for perception time e stands for intellection time it is not intelligent it is intellection time e stands for emotion time and v stands for volition now whenever you are driving on the road and if you see there is any obstruction on your way then your eyes will be the first organ sensory organ that will visualize the things that okay an object is on the way whenever we are driving so the sensory organ will sense and it will send the signals to the brain that thing is called as perception the time which is consumed in that operation is called as perception time that means perception time is the time which is required for the sensation received by the eyes or ears or ears or eyes to be transmitted from the to the brain through the nervous system through the nervous system the sensory organ will transmit the signal to the brain and certain seconds of time will be consumed that is called as perception time so that is the first thing perception time. then once the sensor the sensation and the signals are received by the brain 
the brain our brain will try to understand the situation that okay what kind of critical situation is there what can be done what should be avoided what can be reaction this is all the things that will be covered and that will be considered during the intellection time so so the time required for understanding the situation is called as intellection time that is called as i where your intellect will work once the understanding is done by the brain certain emotions will be reflected such as anger fear anxiety various kind of emotions can be reflected in your mind and that will be delivered through your actions but that time which is consumed during the erection, uh, emotional time the time which is elapsed during that emotional sensation and disturbance such as fear anger anxiety which refers to the situation is called as emotional time that is this and last is about the volition time after all the understanding is done your mind will send your the signal to the body that okay in this situation this reaction should be done this action to be taken so the time which is elapsed during the final action taking time it is called as volition time so perception time intellection time emotion time and volition time this is all about the pieb theory now as per indian road congress norms there are certain things that we need to know that the visual stimulus means eyes or ears and auditory or touch stimulus means touch or uh, operations means the visual stimulus response the th- the response which is taken by mainly emphasized con- uh, operations considered by the eyes means whenever you are taking any action a- actions based on your visual things that will be quite slower as compared to the auditory or touch stimuli means if someone is saying to you someone is telling you that okay tell this action someone is what i can say someone uh, touches you and he tells or she tells you that okay you need to do this you need to apply the brakes then you will act more faster as compared to action taken by your brain dependent on your eye operation so visual stimulus response is slower than auditory or touch stimulus and what is this reaction time what is the definition of reaction time but let me tell you that the time value for some of the simpler types of stimulus stimulus is called as reaction it has been shown in the table that light stimulus is there if any light is reflecting on you and if you are taking the action that will be taking 0.18 seconds if you hear anything then it will and you will take the action it will be taken taking almost 0.14 seconds if someone touches you if someone someone vibrates you and someone tells you forcefully then okay apply the brakes take the diversion take the overtake apply the brakes uh, reduce the speed in that case the reaction time will be 0.14 seconds so you can see that this is about it that visual stimulus response is slower than the auditory touch stimulus so this is about the reaction then another thing is about the vehicular characteristic now vehicular characteristics can be divided into two major categories that involve static characteristics and dynamic characteristics and they are used because they play an important role why because they can affect the highway geometry dimension standards and weight standard if the vehicular characteristics are constant constant and consistent better roads can be constructed better roads can be built means what do i mean by that statement so let me tell you that if norms are fixed that the vehicle of this category should not have more than this amount of width this amount of length this amount of weight then there will be consistency in all the standards and this consistency will help the government and the engineers to construct better amount of roads better quality of roads so vehicular characteristics play an important role let us learn about the static characteristics first static characteristics are those characteristics which can not be changed once they are fixed it involves width of the vehicle length of the vehicle height of the vehicle and the weight of the vehicle 
the width of the vehicle plays an important role because the width of the vehicle will occupy the width of the pavement that will affect the lane width the shoulder width the parking width and the road capacity because if the width of the vehicle is quite higher then only one vehicle will be accumulated by the road and at the same time another vehicle will have difficulty to overtake or to let, let uh, themselves park second thing is about the length of the road length of the road affects the horizontal alignment parking facility and road capacity because if the length of the road is quite less then very less amount of vehicle will be accumulated on the road then the height of the vehicle you may have observed number of times that whenever you are crossing a toll plaza it has been it can it has been written on the toll plaza that okay only 5.5 meter of the height of vehicle can be passed others have to take another route so height of the vehicle plays an important role because the more the height of the vehicle the more weight of the vehicle will be there it can affect the pavement design thickness and the gradient of the road and the weight of the vehicle also play, plays an important role because it can also affect the pavement design and thickness i would i also like to quote that the height of the vehicle also can affect the tunnel height visibility and under structure clearance because if the height of the vehicle is quite high it will have difficulty to get pass through from any tunnel or any underground structure so this is about the static characteristics it also involves the weight of the vehicle the equation for determining the weight of the vehicle is this it is w equals to 1525 in bracket l plus 7.3 minus 14.7 l square where the w stands for gross weight of the vehicles in kg l stands for the distance between extreme axles see if this is the vehicle and these are the wheels then this is called as axle so the distance between extreme axles it should be less than 2.44 meter probably if it is less than 2.44 meter the weight of that vehicle should not be more than 14550 kg as per irc no axle load the load of this axles should no axle load should exceed more than 10000 kg there are certain dimensions of the vehicle that the width of vehicle should not be more than 2.50 meters the height of vehicle should not be more than 3.80 meters if single deck vehicle is there and if double deck vehicle is there then it should not be more than 4.75 meters and length should not be more than this category of vehicles or this kind of vehicle so this criteria you have to understood the width height and length have certain fixed dimensions this is about the static characteristics now if we are talking about dynamic type characteristics then these are the characteristics which may change on their own such as speed acceleration braking system and vehicle body design speed acceleration and braking system can never be consistent they can never be constant we can never drive a vehicle on a constant speed or acceleration or braking system in all these parameters speed and acceleration plays an important role because it is uh, what i can say it is uh, driven by the power of the engine and the resistance to overcome it is important in all the geometric design elements speed and acceleration are important because they are having direct correlation with certain parameters such as side distance stopping side distance overtaking side distance length of the horizontal curve length of the vertical curve radius of the horizontal curve and width of the pavement and road gradient let me make it very easy you have learned about side distance example ssd you have learned that meter per square by 2 gs you have also already learned e is equal to v square by 125 225 these are the equations that you have learned in all the equations v was there v was present and v means speed so speed is having direct connection with with all these things so this is about the dynamic system so we have learned about the dynamic characteristics static characteristics of vehicle or characteristics we have already learned about the rule principles i hope you have gone through the concept thoroughly thank you so much